Con. Oh, a swap! Oh, oh no, but a swap followed by a light bulb. Here. Four man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh no! Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're gonna follow up and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Shotsky looking for that damage, finds him on the Diablo, Diablo forced it back out, is their health drop slow, the Immortal now is at 20%. Back down the on the green man, give me the first of all. But is it ETC? No, that's Malthale up there, a truck. The Leila and Yudes in the back, catching three people on top of that, followed up by the APOC and the Lurking Hunt. Catching two, but this time on, it's gonna be the first one. Wow, did you see that mosh pit? Four man mosh pit, while on a conveyor belt, that was like a regular sushi. There's the lead, catches him in the mud pit, time trap does pop, uh, mosh pit goes out, Ruby is still in trouble, pops to stay a while to listen, but it's not gonna I didn't think they had a chance. I thought it was all over. We said all or nothing, and they got absolutely everything. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. For some of you, it may have been a very short time. Some of you may be watching a VOD, and others of you may be joining us now. I'm Arrow. I'm going to be your caster tonight. This is our second matchup of the night. Thought we should, uh, you know, just try to pick up another one. Because that one was it was fun, it was exciting, and there wasn't a lot of casts tonight. So, why not give everybody an opportunity to have some screen time tonight? So, we're going to stick with the dragon theme tonight. So, unintentionally so, but uh, Red Dragons and Clouded Mines. And thankfully, the good part of this is that the dragons are still on the blue side. I'm sure that I would mess something up if uh, if not. But this is a C West division, so a little bit higher in the rankings uh, as far as the overall division standings. That means that our players, generally speaking, are going to have a little bit higher uh, like Storm League rankings, maybe a little bit more experience in the Nexus Gaming series or in competitive play just in general. So let's take a quick peek at what our map bands were here. All right, so for our blue team, the Red Dragons, they banned out the, uh, let's see, Altrak Pass and Dragonshire. How are you gonna ban Dragonshire? How are you gonna be Red Dragons and you ban Dragonshire? I'm, I'm done, this is over. I'm calling it for Clouded Mines. Anyways, all right. Uh, the rest of what we've got here, though, we've got the bands on to Sky Temple and Tomb of the Spider Queen for Clouded Mines. Our first map is going to be on Braxis Holdout. That was the selection of Red Dragons. And let's take a quick peek at the standings as well. So Clouded Mines there with three points. And you know what? Let me, uh, let me go ahead and just highlight these teams so that we can have this for later. We got Red Dragons there, Clouded Mines there. Red Dragons have two points. Cloud of Minds with three. This is week three of the next gaming series. Maybe things will fare better for the chaotic evil. You know, I Yoda, you are ahead of me. I was going to talk about that, but well done, friend. Well done. You, sir, get a gold star. Harkin Giants Bane. Glad you could be here. Welcome. Ewok Thor. Good to see you. All right. So anyways, these are our standings. Uh, we did the maps, so we'll, you know what? Teams are ready to go, so we'll go into the draft. Here we go. Ewok Thor says, let's go Team Peach. Peach, of course, on the right of your screen there at the bottom for the red team, the Clouded Mines. So we just saw a Division E East matchup between the Gold Dragons and 30 Seconds to Mosh. Saw a whole lot of support bands there. We'll see how the, how the draft changes with this setup. Isex coming in with support for Clouded Mines. And it's gonna be Brightwing. They said, you know what? We saw that, that Brightwing play out of uh, Born to Shine earlier. Well, let's get rid of that. The Braxis holdout was banned out in our last set so it is a very small map quick rotations you've got certain heroes like a genji or i mean medivh falstad can get across 
the walls rapidly and support their allies or well I, I, either way it's support they can support their allies in a, an attempted gank to kill their opponent or to defend from a, an attempted gank so we'll see what we get as far as anything like that the hawk are going to be banned out so clearing out a couple of uh well really most of the globals and stukov stukov is really strong being able to silence the control points, making it very difficult to defend them. Uh, and then, of course, they're just places that he's able to uh, to zone out because of his silence. So Star Knight going to pick up the Johanna first. Would help if I can spell. It's not Kohana, it's Johanna. Hey. Okay. Making sure I've got all the names of the people in here correct. Which we don't. So I'm interested to find out. If anybody knows, please let me know. Because nobody let me know if Eves was correct in the last game. But uh, I'm interested to know if it's Thales or T. Hales. I'm assuming it's Thales. The scoot. Skutoria. Life Skutoria. Life Skutoria? Toria? I could just call him Toria. Anyways, what do we got? We got heroes. We got Junkrat. We got Imperius. We got Leoric. We got Gul'dan. So Gul'dan is a really strong hero here because he's able to sustain through fights forever. And this is a, a place where you want to be able to sustain for a long period of time. You want to be able to control the, con the control points to help build your Zerg wave. And Gul'dan's gonna allow them to do that. He's got other uh, uh, abilities like his fear, his horrified that allows his team to capitalize on enemy teams that are close together. Uh, but you've got Junkrat on the other side and Junkrat is a hero that is going to see a lot of value here. He can jump over walls using his concussion mind so he can get to uh, from top lane to bottom lane quickly or vice versa uh, but he also provides a lot of zone control in the form of his traps and his mines so he can be disgusting to have to deal with may also does that pretty well different abilities to do that but she has that uh, the capability with her blizzard and icing to really force the enemy team to maneuver in a different way Gonna get Rhaegar, so we saw a little bit of Rhaegar action in our last match up there. And we saw how valuable that uh, that Bloodlust was for Rhaegar on that team. A little bit of a different team here, so I, th I imagine that we'll probably see Ancestral here. Gonna get Anduin and Zul'jin, so Zul'jin able to stack because of the fact that just like I was talking about with Gul'dan because you want to have these kind of extended fights where you're you're keeping control of the control point or defending it or what have you uh, I mean Zul'jin can stack very quickly this is in my mind probably the best map for him to be able to stack and stacking means more damage it means more auto attack range just a lot of value there so really significant blow up potential from the cloud of minds if they can land any of those stuns if johanna goes in with her condemn imperious then with uh his celestial charge and then you've got Junkrat and zuljin just pumping damage in that could be a, a difficult circumstance for the red dragons to deal with that said, if Mayor Leoric is able to get a combo out and Tychus can minigun that target, Gul'dan with a Horrify could be lights out. Alrighty then, Weenus coming in with 169 biddies. Thank you, my friend. It's good to see you, Weenus. Let's see if I can get this pull up real quick. Who wins game number one? Red Dragons or 
clouded minds. Put that pole up. And here we go. Game number one on Braxis holdout between Red Dragons and Clouded Minds. Let's get our teams introduced. Off to the left, it's going to be the Red Dragons. We got Jacobia on the Leoric. We got Lunar Ursa there playing the Gul'dan. We got Dizzy on the Rhaegar. We've got Thales on Tychus and Lipscutoria on May. And over to the right, it's going to be Clouded Minds on their not patented well known for clouded minds uh you know cloud of of haze we got star knight there playing johanna we got peach on the anduin uh Tr trelania trelana there we go trelana on the zuljin we got ruffian on junkrat and kian on imperius good evening bellis good to see you Kind of late. I know you had a late night last night, so hope you are enjoying a, a relaxing evening tonight. A big condemn there on to four. And that's the moment as a Johanna player where you're like, man, couldn't we have been four there? Could level four couldn't I have gotten subdue? Can I get retroactive credit for that? And if you're not familiar with that talent, because you don't play Heroes of the Storm or don't play Johanna. It's uh, her level four talent that if she hits four heroes, she completes a quest so that every time she uses that ability, it's an 80% slow instead of a much less slow, like 20 or 25%. Um, but anytime she hits two heroes, she will slow them for 80% anyways, uh, even without the quest completion. it's just It just makes it really nice to know that you can always slow somebody for 80% for two seconds. And now I really do want to know just how long is that slow or how much is it oh 60 percent. so okay so it's more than i i was thinking it was 60 percent is a lot but man does 80 percent just feel like you're standing still like almost four-fifths of the way towards standing still so both camps picked up there in the bottom lane another camp picked up in the top for clouded mines so they've got a little bit of advantage there leoric trying to was looking to maybe defend there but we get a stun and blinds coming out onto the zuljin and the anduin and zuljin really trying hard to stack up there as much as possible oh we get may here with the cleanse from Rhaegar, has the cryo freeze and the root just a moment too soon really good idea there from peach to try to get that root out onto the may but of course, she's unstoppable during Cryo Freeze, so when that Chastise hit, she was still unstoppable. All right. Not a lot of votes in chat, but Clouded Minds wins the poll. So we'll see if chat uh, is remaining prophetic tonight. And there's that Subdue Talent I mentioned earlier with the 80% slow, because they hit two, and Tychus got booped over the wall, but not enough damage there to be able to finish the job. Tychus back after having tapped. Star Knight now the one who's quite low is going to get booped away thanks to the icing. And I think Rhaegar... Oh, Rhaegar's pulling back. Oh, no. Dizzy, you could have had that kill. It would have been a moment. Needed that uh, wolf form to be able to do it. But couldn't quite finish the job there. So no kills so far in this game. Let's check in on top lane as they're going to pull back from each other. So we'll go back to bottom. Trelana there gets knocked away by the icing but Junkrat with that concussion mine I mentioned earlier was able to provide a little bit of zone defense and once again it's going to be May falling very low but they get the counter kill onto Zul'jin immediately Johanna there falling very low as the concussion mine gonna keep Johanna safe throwing Tychus over the wall and it's going to be red with the victory on the zerg here as they were able to hold on to that channel for the entire time there and really when you've got johanna and uh imperius up top there it's hard to pull them off concussion mine from junkrat it it's even harder when you have this brick wall of a tank in the way and then you also have junkrat with his abilities making it so that even if you do uh get in there 
He just throws you away. Weenus with the hearts in chat. Shouting out for Clouded Minds. Of course, Weenus, a member of Clouded Minds After Dark. Which could be where this stream heads if we uh, if we end up passing midnight, but I don't think that'll be likely. So checking on stacks here. We got seven stacks so far for Zul'jin. Not quite getting as many as they would want to have at this point, but it's also a little bit harder to stack with the Bone Slicer. Is Bone Slicer this one? Yeah, Bone Slicer talent. So Bone Slicer giving that additional duration to... Uh, his his axe toss there and a big condemn from Johanna looking for that ghouled on 35 healing reduction of course from this level 7 talent from uh, Johanna as well and do we see the leap of faith here for the Zildjian it looks like Zildjian able to make it through so no leap of faith required and Tychus dodging the concussion mine there that concussion mine would have been in a really bad place. Could have thrown Tychus over the wall, maybe, but able to get away. Jacobia trying to do everything possible to deal with this siege camp up in the top lane, but with uh, Paralyzing Rage, doesn't get the additional damage bonus. Imperius on the defense here, I guess the offense, really, uh, was looking for a target because Leo's busy, and they get that target in the form of May. Leo was rotating down saying, oh, okay, we're, we're going to have a fight here. Well, I guess I should come down, but couldn't quite get there in time. And with May down, very difficult for the blue team, the red dragons, to defend this now. So a little bit of damage going out onto the wall. Both of those towers at half health. And this is the lane where red team Zerg wave is going. The level 10s are not significantly different in time right now. XP very close between the two teams. <laughs> it's Sky Cake. Good shout. Good shout. Here to support the Clouded Minds. Both teams picking up some camps, so we're going to have the Bruiser camps going in bottom and top lane for each of the uh, teams. But it's Red Team starting the channel already. Leoric's going to get on there and stop that pretty quickly. But... I mean, Red's got a, a night camp here heading into the fort. So Johanna does get the blind to stall him out. Level 10's here. If that was a couple of seconds later, that might have been just a, a four-person uh, set of kills there. But it's going to be Leoric falling up top. I'm trying to watch this fort because I thought this was where you guys were going to have all the action. And you're getting the kills up at the top line. I'm sorry, Kian. I'm sorry. Uh, but surprisingly, Imperius not getting the Zerg wave. There you go. I was going to say, that channel would be really helpful. Well, here comes the Rip Tires. Going to hit onto Tychus. The Ancestral's coming in just in time to keep him alive. Odin is now popped, so he gets that unstoppable, taking a little bit less damage thanks to the 25 armor. Horrify going out is only really going to hit Zul'jin, although it did tap Zul the Jana. 35 healing reduction out, and Tychus having to pull back. Here comes the Ice Wall onto Johanna only, and they're looking for Trelana, but can't quite get there, and Trelana's going to be able to make it out, but just barely, thanks to Zul'jin's ultimate there, uh, able to survive just long enough. That was a kill, if not for Taz Dingo. Holy cow. There you go. Four kills to one. Let's take a look at the talents, just to remind everybody what we've got here. Uh, suicide Vest for Ruffian on the Junkrat there. So that's helpful into, say, for example, the May. She gets that Blizzard or... I'm not sure. I don't think... I, I think that might be the only thing. So I don't... Icing's just a knockback. It's not a stun. And uh, I don't think Ice Wall would do it. Well, there's the Blessed Shield hitting onto three. Star Knight looking deep. Has the Light Bomb coming in. Is going to hit onto the May. May having to pop the crowd first. Is going to be able to dodge the Concussion Mine, but now has a Zerg Wave coming in. Rip Tire is looking. Tychus was maybe trying to, to stall it out, but the Rip Tire is just going to land onto the fort, and the Zerg Wave is uh, doing a lot of damage here. Gets slowed down pretty significantly thanks to the May. And May trying to blind out Zul'jin as well, but the fort is going to fall. Yeah, unfortunately, I won't be able to cast that one because I have plans on Thursday. So unless 
that somehow changes. All right, so Ruffian, with that concussion mind, going to throw that over the wall to give vision of the rest of the team. A little bit of damage out onto that keep tower. The first one, uh, about half health. Up in the top lane, that Zerg wave did do a little bit of damage. They, you know, even if you don't get channel, you do get at least a partial Zerg wave, and it's enough that it can take out a fort. So you do tend to need to leave somebody back to deal with it. As once again, both teams going to pick up their siege camps almost, almost simultaneously, really simultaneously, really. And then these siege camps do a lot of work too. Uh, their auto attacks reduce the armor, so thus they increase the amount of damage. As you see here, Tychus now stacking up that negative armor penalty, so that's now 20% additional damage he's taking, not just from those minions, but from anything. So if enemy heroes show up, like say an Imperius on the hunt from behind. That could have been uh, could have been dangerous. It's like Mace checking those steam vents to make sure that there's no opportunity to have a Johanna find him. Oh my goodness, Leoric with the Wraithwalk just in time to dodge that Blessed Shield and then juking out of the Celestial Charge stun from Imperius. Jacobia there feeling has to be feeling lucky and feeling good because that could have been an easy kill if either of those stuns lands but as a consolation prize clouded minds will take themselves a fort and as far as consolation prizes go it's not too bad a little bit faster on the camp for red dragons as Bottom mine's working on theirs as well. Lane starting to build up in the bottom lane for Clouded Mines, pushing in on that bottom keep. Zildjian at 14 stacks. 15 is when Zildjian's going to get that additional range well. Blessed Shield is going to go out onto May, but the Ancestral is going to keep her alive. Along with that Cryo Freeze. Zildjian getting blinded is a big reason why... Zildjian's having some difficulty here in getting those stacks. May landing uh, blinds consistently. And Concussion Mine once again on the point. Here comes Imperius looking for the May maybe, but I think uh, the, the pull actually pulled him out of it. So again, not feeling too bad about that if you know if you get the kill. And Imperius heading down to pick up the channel in the bottom lane here. Looking for the Tychus, though, on the rotation. Not going to be able to get him. He's going to be able to use that run and gun and get out of dodge. As Zildjian going to head up and pick up the soak in the top lane. And Zildjian did get past the 15 mark. So now has the additional auto attack range. Next checkpoint there is at 30 to give the additional spin on the... Uh, Ax, the double axes which I cannot remember the name of right now so why don't we take a look what is that ability there it is twin cleave all right blessed shield coming out onto the Tychus and Leoric light bomb coming in as well big stun onto at least three if not four there ice wall's gonna go out onto Johanna only Johanna Tychus having to pull back but the celestial charge out onto the Rhaegar it's gonna take him out and May getting booped into the team is gonna get taken out in midair Zul Jin with the throw taking that shot and now going for more stacks trying to keep up with that Gul'dan and uh two for nothing in favor of the red team and with that they're gonna push the Zerg wave up and get themselves a boss and this is if this goes top lane which i think it will because they already did yeah i think this i think this boss goes top lane right yeah, here it comes this is very challenging now for red dragons to defend they've got Gul'dan. he can do a lot of damage in the zerg clear but clearing that with the boss is very difficult and with this level of push, 100% Zerg wave with a boss, this is where you start to think about can, as the red team, can you push to win? 16 isn't here for the blue team, so look for them to take as much advantage of that as possible. And this boss just shreds structures. Leoric getting brought to half there, but between Junkrat and the Zerg wave. 
And as you can see, Keep is already at half health there. That Ice Wall didn't hit any heroes, but may have provided some zoning potential. Leoric trying to get away now as, oh my goodness, May taking the full brunt of Imperius's ultimate there. And Boss is still quite healthy, sitting at about 80% still. Riptire coming out, looking for the tanks. The front line is going to fall on the Leoric and May falling as well. And that should be the go-ahead for the red team, pushing on to the core. We see uh, the Odin popped by Tychus, but it's just not enough. Game number one, going to Clouded Mines. Good evening, Aura. Hey, Aura's Ahmad here. Did you guys know that? Aura probably didn't remember that. <laughs> so game number one, going over to Clouded Mines on Braxis Holdout. Uh, the map selection there was from Red Dragons. So Clouded Mines either picked first pick. <laughs> I'm not going to make, I'm not going to finish that statement because there's some things. I don't want to be a John Madden, okay? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Just gonna go ahead and write down these heroes. We'll we'll go with that. Anybody remember the third band for clouded mines? Funny, I always get distracted talking about what's going on in the draft, and then I forget to write down the third ban of only one team. And it's never the same team. It's, it, sometimes it's the left team, sometimes it's the right team. I had a rumor that Arrow is the best caster in all the land. Can anyone confirm? Well, Arrow is the absolute best caster on this channel at this time. How about that? A lot of really great... Uh, casters in the Nexus gaming series. And for HOTS in general, right? Not all of them uh, participate in the Nexus gaming series. All right, dogs, let's, let's see if we can adjust this. There we go. Breaking the immersion there of me being in front of this strange purple and blue background wall i honestly i only picked that animation because of the uh the border that uh murda put together so thank you murda shout out to murda murda rg another caster and player in the nexus gaming series also founder of the regen organization all right so anyways oftentimes teams seem to want to pick first pick but not always when they uh when they want when they have lost a game. Uh, it does seem that is the case. So our first first pick will go over to the Red Dragons. And that gives us map pick coming out from Clouded Mines. So what did, let's take a look at what we had for bands again. So Clouded Mines banned out Tomb of Spider Green and Sky Temple. Very different maps. One very macro focused and snowball -y, the other kind of snowball-y so the i mean tomb of spider can, can be kind of snowball -y, but it's a very small map uh lots of team fights in there as well trying to prevent people from turning in the gems so for their map selection um hmm do they maybe look for something like probably one of the bigger maps right like maybe cursed hollow again or maybe we see a garden tear. Oh, it could be Infernal Shrines. Infernal Shrines is one of the most picked. And it's not banned. So we could see Infernal Shrines. I think it's either going to be Infernal Shrines or Cursed Hollow. We'll see if I'm right. I am probably not right. But then again, they did do really well over the fights. So they probably want a map where there's going to be a lot of direct fighting. Which... Infernal Shrines can have a lot of that. I mean, really, all of these have moments of fighting. I think... Uh, I think Volskaya might be the closest kind of like that. So maybe they look for that. If they want to have a, um, a, a long duration fight like they did with Braxis, maybe that's where they go is Volskaya. So we'll see. Who knows? I can make a case for any map that's on the list there and probably a few that are not on the list. For example, they could go to Haunted Mines. 
who wouldn't want to go to Haunted Mines, right? Play on a two level map where Deathwing breaks the game. Hopefully we'll hear something soon. Let's see. They, okay, so they look to be in a game. But I don't know. Let's see. Found Minds is not in the game, so it's just the, the one team. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick video clip of uh of something here i'm not sure which one will pop up there'll be something that pops up while we wait for the teams so let me just go over to the page there so that i can make sure i don't have multiple that will play. yeah i don't want to play that one that one's too long let's go with this one. Oh, you know what we'll go with we'll go with uh this one okay so i'm gonna play a quick video clip and then uh we'll be right back Alrighty, so we do have our second map, and it's going to be Infernal Shrines. So sticking with my original thoughts on where they might go, uh, Infernal Shrines being... I don't know if it's still the most popular. It, it certainly has been for a long time. I don't know if it's uh, the most popular map this season, um, but definitely an overall very popular map, and it, it has a lot of potential variety in the form of the different um, Im Immortals that you get, the Frozen the arcane and the mortar punishers what's d shield gonna do about this car d shield i don't know i have no idea i don't know how to answer that question but it wasn't posed to me it was posed to ektar so i imagine that ektar will have an answer for you uh let's see so anyways here we go on Infernal Shrines, and once the teams are ready to go, we'll be set up so that we can get into game number two. What was our poll result on that one? It's Cloud of Minds, right? Yeah, okay. Just checking to make sure that I had that correct in my mind. And let's just take a quick peek at what's going on later. Okay, so it looks like, oh, Cloud of Minds After Dark are playing at 11 o'clock. Weenus. Oh my goodness. Well, here we go. It's Infernal Shrines, game number two between Red Dragons and Clouded Minds. First ban of the match coming in here. Oh. <laughs> it's Skycake says it was my favorite line ever said during a cast. I can't remember who said that to you. It was casting one of our After Dark games last season. Well, it was probably uh, Ace, right? 
as the last time I updated Stats of the Storm, Infernal Shrines has been played 69 times. Nice. The second most played is Tomb of the Spider Queen at 45. And I think Tomb of the Spider Queen was generally the second most popular map as well. So there you go. Hey, you can't dig through the bed, Alice. <laughs> Trying to soften up her her bedding space there. All right, so we have Kael'thas, Johanna being banned out. We have Lucio and Tyrande being banned out. But Tyrande feels like a target ban, like, like a specific combo that they like to play. And you know what? There's the Diablo, so uh, it makes sense. The Diablo charge into a Tyrande uh, Lunar Flare stun could be a pain in the neck to deal with. But there's Stukov. He was banned out last game. In fact, he's been banned out all night. It was the first chance that we get to see the Stukov, so... He says, yes, please. I'll take that hero. Diablo going to be the tank for the side of the Red Dragons. Is there a, I guess the, there's really no good, like, I guess you could go with the Kaiji. If you wanted to go, oh, is Brightwing, is Brightwing a dragon skin? Uh, I wasn't looking. All right, I'll see you later. Uh, you know, Ragnaros. So many opportunities that they could have had for Ragnaros skins that will never be realized. All right, listen, chat, help me out here. What are the best ideas for the Ragnaros skins that you either saw or that you yourself, you know, thought of? I think there was one where it was like a water elemental Ragnaros, and of course the lava wave was instead like an ocean wave, and, um, you know, instead of the, the meteors, they threw out like, you know, from the, the fort, they did the balls, like just balls of water, basically. Um... Trying to think uh, what's a, obviously a snowman would be kind of similar. Um, although I think that would fit more. That'd be a very May like uh, skin. But yeah, I'm just just curious if anybody out there has any Ragnaros skins that they would have liked to have seen crafted in uh, the Nexus. But we're going to get bans onto Sonya and Zuljin. So uh, no auto attack hero there coming in. At least not that one. And we're going to get Malthale and Tychus for the uh, Cloud of Mines here. So the other elements, obviously, like those make sense. But what's something that might be a little bit different that could be fun? Muddy Rag, Shark... Oh, Sharknado Rag. That could have been really fun. Ooh, I like that one. We're gonna get Tassadar and Greymane. So Ragnaros with the Lava Waves could provide a lot of uh, lane pressure and of course XP. And then you've got the Greymane, probably Curse Bullet, I would think, maybe. And then we're gonna get Arthas for the tank. So Arthas, kind of slow moving, doesn't have a lot of help on the rest of his team to, to be able to do so. Um, so we'll see how that affects his mobility in this. Malthale, uh, able to get around a little bit easier, but is not really tanky, so kind of... kind of going to be an interesting setup here. A um, lot of slow potential on the side of Clouded Mines. If they're able to get onto anybody, they don't get away. And that's really nice for a Tychus. Junkrat being able to boot people in is probably the best set of circumstances for Cloud of Mines. Is if they can separate the, the opposing team and get one or two people bounced into them, then Arthas and Malthale and Tychus are just going to go nuts. Um, and then for Red Dragons, it, depending on what Ragnaros, Ragnaros maybe does take uh, Sulfura Smash. And then we've got a combo of Polymorph and Smash. Diablo charges um, and and Tassadar with force walls could be a challenge for Cloud of Minds to deal with, especially for that Arthas. All right, game number two, 
Let's get our teams introduced over to the right. This time we'll start with them. We've got Clouded Minds. It's going to be Peach there on the Stukov. We got Ruffian on the Junkrat, Star Knight on Arthas, Trelena on the Tychus, and Kian on Malthale. And off to the left, it's going to be the Red Dragons. We got Liscutoria on the Diablo. We got Dizzy on Brightwing. We got Thales on Tassadar, Lunar Ursa on Greymane, and Jacobia on Ragnaros. And I should do that poll real quick while we just show the mid lane for a moment. Don't mind me. You poll wins game number two. RD or CF. Not even gonna do their whole names. Just just the abbreviations. Alright, let's show some talents here as well. I don't think we missed anything. Brad got some XP, or is trying to get some XP in the bot lane. And uh, Malthale's heading up to the top, so... A little bit of a different setup here. Oftentimes you'll see the solo lane up in the top, unless they are trying to double soak. I don't know that Rag is really going to be able to do that between bot and mid effectively with the uh, with the team he's facing. It'd be very risky. Uh, but Rag did go into the auto attacks... So, trying to get as many minion kills as possible. Let me see Rag on the way up. Getting a couple more stacks, up to seven. All right, so Ektar says, let's go Dragons. We got Tiger saying, let's go CM. Tiger, don't you have a match in a few minutes? Then we got uh, It's Skycake says, let's go Tiger. Already shouting out Tiger on their game, starting in uh, a short bit. Level 4 is coming up soon, a little bit faster maybe for our blue team as uh, we've got Red working on their siege camp. Ragnaros staying in the lane while Malthale was down below trying to uh, gather that XP in the mid lane. Should be able to get all of that and that actually puts the red team on 4 just a little bit ahead of the red dragons. Arthas getting a root out onto 2. Working on that Howling Blast level 1 quest, eventually uh, allowing for his Howling Blast to root anybody in the line. It really changes how you use that ability when you go from trying to root somebody on the point, like on the, the, the end of the ability, to anybody in that entire line. Significant difference in uh, ability to slow down and CC the enemy teams. We also have Brightwing coming in with the uh, Bribe Talent, which I cannot remember the name of. It is Pixie Charm. Well done, Kian. Did it to me again. Talking about a talent, you go get a kill. Thanks for that, appreciate it. Best caster NA right here. If you want to miss all of the solo kills, I am happy to help you do that. 21 stacks for Rag. Uh, Tassadar, we're going to catch this one, though. Tassadar, there's no chance Tassadar makes it out of this. I was going to say, unless Junkrat helps him. And that is an unfortunate time for Tassadar to die. So Red Dragons are going to get as many of the Siege Monkeys that they can possibly get. Uh, but Cloud of Minds is going to make it here. And they have a lot of AoE damage, right? The... Junkrat auto attacks attacks in an AoE. Uh, Malthale's auto attacks attack in an AoE. And then they've got, you know, Tychus grenades if they want to use them and all that good stuff. So they can they can get through those minions pretty quickly. They're already three quarters of the way done. Here comes Brightwing onto the Diablo. Arthas going to get flipped, charged in the wall. Polymorph as well. And Diablo's trying to finish it but can't get there. Ragnaros instead, however, going to fall to the Tychus and Malthale in the background. Uh, Greymane gonna find himself a uh, free ticket to the graveyard. And Punisher, depending on how this goes, Punisher could decide to start punching somebody that's got a lower health pool. And Diablo's not who you might think has a lower health pool, but was getting very low. The Arcane Laser's doing a little bit of work, providing some zone potential here as Ragnaros now going to pop into the fort and push off 
the rest of Clouded Minds. Cider and Soju. Oh, Junkrat is a little bit forward, but is going to be able to get away. And it looks like we have the Arcane Flare talents here for uh, Brightwing, getting Dream Shot for that additional range and cooldown. And able to pick up that camp, but is going to pay for it with their life. Uh, the other thing, Sticky Flare, so the slows um, able to provide some value too. So we'll see how that goes. Those talents also help build into that Pixie Charm for the level one, getting the additional stacks because of uh, the cooldown reduction on Arcane Flare. What brand of cider, Ektar? Is it Dickens brand? For the longest time, the only type of cider that I could find was uh, Woodchuck. And then I started seeing some other ciders show up and like uh, Red Apple and they're pretty good. I, I don't personally enjoy beer, so uh, I, I am a big fan of cider and found that out when I went over to Ireland to visit my sister when she was living there. She's like, you should try this. Like, okay. And it was great. Angry Orchard. That's another one. Yep. Haven't had Strongbow. All right. Bottom lane. Able to get that tower down. So a little bit of value here for our red team as they're going to be looking. They're on the hunt. They have level 10s. They're not going to be looking because Junkrat's in the bottom lane just pushing that lane up. I thought they would be looking. But instead, the dragon's going to get the opportunity to get their level 10s. All right, it is going to be Lava Wave. And it's going to be go for the throat. So looking to dive in. Maybe trying to see if they can get that Arthas low again like they, they did here around this midpoint. And then finish the job. Black Hole there for Tassadar. So a combination of the Apocalypse and Black Hole could lock somebody down long enough to be able to get that kill, especially with a Polymorph on top of it. Uh, the question is, does the Massive Shove help enough? We won't know until we get there. Arthas getting a couple more stacks on that Howling Blast, up to 13, I believe it's 20? Yes, 20. Polymorph is down. The Arthas is going to get charged into the wall, so a big stun, but it's going to be Greymane who falls. And Apocalypse came out trying to zone out the team and stall them, but can't do it. Riptide are going to come in, and that's going to be Diablo falling as well. And that's kind of the, the problem. That's the challenge that you deal with if you're going to flip that Arthas. You absolutely have to kill him. Because if you don't kill him, you are all slowed. Your auto attacks are going to be slowed, so Greymane's not going to do as much damage if he's into melee range. Um, and then you're not going to be able to get out of the Concussion Mines. Uh, Stukov silences you like there are just so many problems so if you don't get Arthas dead almost immediately then you die so we'll see if they change their strategy either to uh, to better isolate Arthas or find another target and meanwhile up in the top lane we've got uh, Malthale working on Getting the Siege Monkeys. 15 down already. And Red Dragons are, are just trying to get some value wherever they can. They want to get lane pressure so that when this Immortal comes up, it forces Cloud of Minds to either send people to deal with those Siege Camps or maybe they don't. And maybe they get some uh, value out of it. Just like we're going to see this Lava Wave coming in. That's going to clear up that lane and give that Siege Camp some some pressure into this bottom fort. And that's why Junkrat's here. He's going to boop them in so that they all die. Right? Or he'll just kill them. That works too. All right. So in the mid lane, however, a little bit of a gank attempt. Not able to, to capitalize on it as Rad... Rad? Rag is going to go into his molten core <laughs> and the Punisher leaping over the wall onto the fort. You don't see that very often I don't think at least I don't uh Brywing could be in danger here it's actually going to be the Diablo who gets caught by the root 19 stacks now there's Arthas getting flipped into the tower so the tower providing some value but Diablo getting pummeled by John Cena and a stack out there for the last rights on Malthal Greymane looking might be able to secure this kill on Malthal and does so a one for one so far and Greyman having to pull back. Tassadar getting very low, is stuck in the silence. Arthas going to try to get there. Oh my goodness, can Dizzy survive? Does get that soothing mist rock. 
And now, uh, with the minion wave, I mean, they were low enough. They probably could have gotten a little bit more damage out. Hoax nose, lol. Is that correct? Hoax nose? Hox nose? Hoxy nose? Says get him CM. As the siege camp going to be picked up here. The bruiser camp, rather. Siege camps are these guys. Uh, going to be taken in the top lane. So mid lane has a little bit of pressure from the earlier siege camp that we saw. And of course, uh, bottom now, Ragnaros working on that. Now, I will say this. Uh, Ragnaros is getting to that point where, especially at 16, he's going to have percent damage. So we'll see if that makes a difference in getting that Arthas kill. Tassadar. Uh, could be taking the Primal Lance? Is that what it's called? Can't possibly be called that. That doesn't sound right at all. Uh, but anyways, takes the percent damage at 16. And Arthas could fall very quickly between Tassadar and Ragnaros. So we'll see. Uh, Greyman also gets Executioner or Alpha Wolf. And if Arthas falls, then the rest of the team becomes vulnerable because you no longer have that slow keeping everybody away from your team. Well, here comes a root with the armor reduction. Greyman absolutely obliterated here is just able to make it away. And that was a great gank attempt there. Star Knight with the big root having that completed quest as well. Just a little bit, just a little bit uh, short of what they needed to get that kill. Hawks is fine. You got it. You don't like hoax nose. <laughs> Thermal Lance. That's what it is. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Hector. And Rackham. Hey, Rackham. Good to see you, buddy. All right. So Siege Camp picked up in the bottom lane for Clouded Mines. And of course, earlier we saw them take out that bottom fort. So they got a little bit of catapult pressure pushing in here. This has to be dealt with by our blue team or that makes its way to its keep. And right now with the mid lane Punisher, that's going to be a Mortar Punisher. That would be not good. And this is a great play by Cloud of Mines. Here comes Arthas is not going to get the root. And Polly's going to keep uh, Arthas busy. Greymane's going to be able to sneak out just a little bit off. If that lands, if that root lands, somebody dies in that 5v4. And Malthale gets another stack of last rights. All right, let's see what we got. 16, it is going to be Thermal Lance. And, of course, for Ragnaros, his uh, Giant Scorcher, so he's getting that additional damage as well. Greyman going into Eager Wolf. So if he's able to keep that attack speed up, it goes up, right? It increases the attack speed. So we'll see how that turns out. Could be a, a, a big positive playing into the slow. Uh, the gank attempt there, or the gank, rather, not an attempt, they completed it, out onto Malthale, is huge for Red Dragons. That gives them so much room here to be able to uh, get onto this point. They're almost caught up on the Skeletal Defenders and Mouthail can't be here for another 30 seconds. It's very likely this is going to be their first Immortal of the game. And now Cloud Minds has to look at this and say, what can we do elsewhere? Can we keep some pressure in the lanes? But again, with Ragnaros keeping the pressure in the bottom lane, Junkrat has to split down there and just deal with that. So they're really just trying to focus on getting XP. Most of the ultimates up here for both teams. Lava Wave down and Last Rites, technically. Diablo looking for the Arthas, but Silence coming out from Stukov, so he's able to keep Diablo away from the Arthas. Diablo taking the 20 armor penalty from the tower. Just tanking those shots as a stun going out onto Malthale. Looks with the charge. And Malthale getting a, a truckload of fire damage coming from that Mortar Punisher. Got brought down to half health, so... Oh, the Concussion Mine is going to throw Diablo over. And Brightwing blinking in. Maybe not the, uh, the, the brightest of the Brightwing decisions you could have, but was able to sneak back away. Uh, tried to save the Diablo, but ultimately it's going to be two kills. And that Concussion Mine was brilliant. It was a huge play by the Junkrat. If uh, they can get any more out of this... Obviously, top top lane, that Shaman Camp did a lot of value up in that top fort. Bottom lane continues to provide pressure as it gets close to that fort. But here's what Red Team gets. They get a fort out of those two kills. And there's nothing 
that the red dragons can do to stop it. What Ektar said? Yeah. <laughs> they actually are going to get two forts out of it. So level 20 is coming up here in a moment for Clouded Mines. And that's going to give them a huge advantage for a good 60 seconds, maybe. They might lose bottom fort, though. Oh, we'll see. Is this... So we get an invade with those 20s. Cooldown reduction on Junkrat for his Rip Tire and for Stukov for Massive Shove. Uh, let's take a look at this one here, because, you know, they re reworked this... Well, they adjusted this talent a while ago, Death's Advance, giving him the just base movement speed, and but also increasing how much his slow provides from his Tempest. Tempest? Frozen? Yeah, Frozen Tempest. Yep. So bottom fort, very low for the red team. It's not quite as low as it was for the blue team when red team destroyed the blue team's fort, but it's pretty close. And the next Punisher is in the bottom lane. Neither team... I mean, ultimately, basically, neither team has a fort there. Now, Malthale is away here. Diablo's going to charge onto the tie because this could be the, the one they're looking for. They get the rag in the fort. Molten Core comes out with a big stun onto three. Can they get the tie? Because they do, but the Suicide Best doing a lot of work is going to uh, bring somebody under half there. Uh, Greymane taking loads of damage here. Has to pull back as Peach also in danger. Also pretty far back here, but Diablo is trying to make something happen there. Do they only get the one kill out of this? Holy cow, that was intense. Absolutely fantastic play. Uh, with a little bit more, they could have maybe gotten another kill, but they just couldn't quite get the uh, the follow-up there. Everybody spread out on both teams, and that actually worked in Clouded Minds' favor. But 20 seconds left on Tychus, so he'll be up in time to defend on the bottom shrine. And now both teams have no fort in the bottom lane. This Punisher right here, which is going to be a Frozen Punisher, could be the deciding factor in this game. And neither team is there for it. <laughs> All right, looks like Arthas is on his way. He said, hey, if you're not going to be here, we'll get on it. So they did change. They went after the Tychus and were able to uh, get him taken out pretty quickly, even without dumping everything into him. They did have the Rag Molten Core, though, and that's not available now, so we'll see how that changes things. Odin is up, has the big red button, so look out for those nukes. Going to be a nuke landing on Diablo. There it is. Riptire coming out, looking for the Diablo as Apocalypse is going to hit as well. Tyke, or, uh, Tassadar, rather, very low as we're going to get that last rights coming in, and blue health bars are just getting melted. Uh, Diablo Rag going to fall. Here comes Malthale, maybe looking for to continue on but ultimately they just get the punisher they said we're at the punisher early we're able to keep the uh, defenders going diablo is back on the map he had soul so he's here but he doesn't have a whole lot of health now punisher on its way as the the keep wall is taken out and really they're gonna lose the keep all the all they can really hope to do is slow things down enough that they can get tacitar and rag back up and not lose the diablo diablo is very low so is brightwing Blinking all around, Diablo's going to get silenced as he flips Malthale. Malthale's going to help secure that kill. Apocalypse coming in just a little bit too late to help. Can Greyman finish a kill? That is huge for them. Uh, as they get the Arthas and Malthale. Malthale does have the buyback, I believe, so he could potentially come back. But it's everybody on the blue side gone and a full, well, three quarters health Punisher. It's going to be slow, but this Punisher will take that out with, with just Rag and Tassadar. It's going to be a very difficult defense, especially if John Cena lands some big stuns like that. Rag's going to come in with the fort. Does he have the heroic upgrade? No, he doesn't. He has Lava Wave. So 10 seconds left on Lava Wave. Right now, it's looking very strong for our red team. They've got the defense on uh, the far side away from Rag and putting all of that damage in. Nice black hole, but is it enough? Rip Tire coming out and the core is going to go down. And that's going to be a 2-0 victory in favor of Clouded Minds.
Okay. There are your stats. All right, and we'll show talents, and then once we get our interview target in here, we'll uh, switch over to the interview, interview page. I am joined here by Ruffian uh, from Clouded Minds. Welcome. Congratulations. How are you and the team feeling after that big victory? Oh, we were feeling really, really good. We had a tough match last week, so it feels super good to bounce back. Well, it looked very strong, and I'm so glad that you joined us because uh, I got to say, Junkrat tonight was a key component to your victories. You had some absolutely critical uh, uh, concussion mines, and I'm going to start off with the 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 most valuable one. Maybe it, it maybe it wasn't the the best one out of all of them, but the the one that I think was most valuable was that one right at the end there, with uh, getting Diablo and somebody else, Greymane maybe I think over the wall. Uh, so Junkrat, presumably you love to play Junkrat. That set up a great play. How much of that is like team set, set up for you and how much of that is you just saying, hey, team, I'm going to throw you over my back and make this happen? <laughs> well, um, the jump rat is kind of something new we've brought in this season. Um, so we've been practicing it a lot. And so I think it just takes a lot of time playing together, like because when we first started playing, it wasn't going so great. People were like going all over and it things weren't really like happening from it. <laughs> so it took a long time just kind of playing together as a team and getting getting used to it basically. Sure. So, you know, I, I saw this draft kind of building and I was a little bit concerned just because of the fact that uh, Arthas can be really tanky, but he's also um, can can be difficult sometimes to, to help your team. And I was concerned that maybe with their combination of all their percent damage and things like that, that Arthas would end up getting you know, just deleted and then you guys would all be on the back foot. So with the team that you've built here, were you kind of supplementing that in some ways or were you not worried about that? Or, you know, tell me a little bit about how that draft came together and, and you know, protected the team. Sure, sure. So we were considering the Arthas, um, but for exactly those reasons, we kind of wanted to save it to later to make sure it didn't get, you know, hard countered. So that's, you know, we kind of saved it to see what they were doing. And honestly, I think when we saw the gray main come out, um, that's when we decided we wanted to go ahead and, and go for it because we feel like, you know, that could kind of offer some protection. Sure, sure. And it worked out, worked out quite well. Uh, I don't think, I don't, I, Arthas didn't die very many times. Actually, I've got the stats right here, but, um, but it was never like, yeah, one time. So so it was never like what they were trying to do, which was the charge in, you know, throw all their percent damage onto Arthas and, and delete him. It was like an incidental of, you know, after some other people had died. So it worked out really well for you guys. I do have to shout out Peach doing some absolutely god tier uh, zoning with silences and, um, you know, the the massive shoves for for exactly that purpose to keep uh arthas alive so many times so you know it's not always just the tanks sometimes it's our healers keeping us alive right yeah we definitely talked about that too going into the game that we knew arthur was a little bit risky um you know and that they could really like collapse on him and i think peach was well aware of that and keeping a, a really good eye on him um i think when they i think when they didn't go um Bullet. Uh, what should we call it? Bullet. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, we we were a little less concerned, but then I was more concerned because I was like, "Oh God, he's gonna be coming in on me." Um, but ended up luckily working out. I just tried to kind of on the junk rat, stay back, stay safe, and then uh, 
Carolina, you know, on the on the Tychus is a little beefier, <laughs> so can can take a couple hits from gray main and probably still survive. But I, I was definitely a little scared of the gray main for sure as as Junkrat um, once I saw him go that ult. <laughs> sure. So in game number one on Braxis, there, uh, you end up getting that kind of go ahead moment where you um, you pick up the uh, at the very end you pick up that that channel on the bottom point and then you call in for the boss and then ultimately that leads you to the victory um it, you may not remember all the details prior to that of that fight you you guys did a great job of looking for and finding opportunities um on on kill targets and uh one prior like just 30 seconds prior to that fight i think um missed uh, you know kind of forced them back into their into their base but uh it it looked good um, but when you're when you're setting up for that play and you've got the uh, the Zerg wave coming in and you make the boss call, how much of that is that you're expecting you're going to be able to win the game off this play? And is there a lot of patience? Is there a lot of aggression? What are you guys looking for when that happens? I think that we did think we could win the game off that play. And um, I just want to call out Star for making a great shot call there because everything in our souls wanted to chase down those last like one or two kills, you know, that we may have been able to chase and get or whatever. But instead of wasting our time doing that, he called us off, had us go to the boss. And, uh, you know, that was a really, that's something that we're working on as a team is to kind of like, make better use of our opportunities and i'm really proud of us because i feel like we did a much better job of that today i i generally would agree well i i can't agree that it's that you did a better job but i i do agree that you did a good job of it today because i have nothing to you know compare to recently for you guys but but it, it did look good and i did mention even in the cast several times it's like okay so this happened so what does that mean for them and as a great example of that you guys got a couple of kills, the the uh, Diablo and uh, Greymane that I mentioned earlier from your concussion mine. So what did you get from that? You got the mid fort, you got the top fort, and that's permanent structure damage. That's catapults the rest of the game, and it's it's huge value. Um, so it, you absolutely uh, are correct. It looks like you guys are doing a great job with that. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a, a work in progress, but um, you know we've already made a lot of progress from last week. Um, we you know we watched the match back very closely, identified some things that we thought were issues and really worked hard to kind of not do those same things this this week. Sure. Uh, I do want to just say uh, a public apology to Kian for missing the solo kills uh, twice because I was talking about talents completely just, <laughs> you know, ignoring what was going on. So sorry, Kian. It, it, is it pronounced Kian, by the way? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Yep. Okay uh all right yeah so, he's a beast he is an absolute beast we're really happy to have him on the team yeah there there were some really clutch plays in in both games where i was just like oh man if this goes this way then it's great and then like there was one point where uh you guys got a kill and and i was like oh well you know that feels bad to be the imperious player because you're trying to to land that stun but johanna pulls them off of your stun but they die anyway so do you really like do you care that they pulled them off your stun? Even though, you, you know, you're, you're kind of like, come on. I, I had that one, right? Yeah. Just those yeah, moments. I'm, I'm sure they'll be talking about that later. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> exactly. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I always like to to end, before we do the uh, shout outs, I always like to ask uh, any particular, and you don't, it, it, listen, I, I barely remember what I had for, for dinner. Uh, so if, if you don't remember the place, that's okay. But I always like to ask it's, if, if there was any particular play that you wanted to, to, you know, kind of give a special highlight to, and it doesn't have to be something you did. It could be something your team did or something the opposing team did, just something that you were like, that was a wow moment. That was really clutch. Oh gosh. Um, I'm thinking back. Honestly, I, this is going to sound really lame, but I just want to call out better team communication and be make being snappier with all of our calls. Like as things went down, we were a lot snappier with our decision making. And I really think that it was that like over the overall match versus like one play that helped us get the victory today. Sure. I, I don't think that's lame at all because communication is key in your strategy and being able to coordinate around a map and do the things that you want to do and be successful in the game. So if you're finding that that 
is better for you as a team, then that's absolutely worth it. And you could see that, like that boss play, like getting those uh, forts, like getting camps when, um, you know, when it's opportune and and not doing them when it's not opportune. A lot of those little details are are uh, really helpful, and it looked like you guys did a great job for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. It felt great. All right. So, any shout outs? Yeah. Um, thank you very much for picking up the the match at the last <laughs> the 11th hour here. <laughs> we really appreciate uh, you doing that. That's awesome. My pleasure. And also, I just wanted to thank Red Dragon for a great match. Um, they're a tough team, and I think they're going to you know, have a great season. So thank you for great games. Um, I also want to shout out the Cloud and Minds organization. Um, we've got three teams. We all root each other on. We're all in different divisions. So um, thank you, everybody, for your support. And I just got to shout out my team and just really proud of the work that we did uh, to prepare for the match today. Excellent. Well, and I know that the uh, Cloud of Minds After Dark are actually playing right now. They started about 20 minutes ago. Unfortunately, they don't have a caster, so we can't raid over to them. Uh, oh, darn. I would have been happy to do so. But uh, thank you very much for joining me here. Uh, again, congratulations on your victory. And don't forget to uh, get your match reported. Definitely won't forget to do that. Thank you so much. Talk yeah, to you absolutely. later. Have a good one. All right. So that's going to be it for us tonight. Uh, I, I did go a little bit longer. This is uh, almost two and a half hours of our stream tonight. Got two sets of games in here. Earlier, we saw the Gold Dragons versus 30 Seconds to Mosh. This round, we saw the Red Dragons versus Clouded Mines. Uh, a couple of really exciting matches to cast there were a lot of just crazy crazy plays and glad that we were able to do this so everybody that's been here tonight thank you for joining me thank you for participating and you know enjoying heroes of the storm uh blizzard may have thrown us to the to the wolves but it's still an enjoyable game we all like to have some fun with it and i'm glad that uh you're here enjoying the show so we are going to go ahead and raid i'm just going to double check here to see if this uh, match is uh, it's 1-0 and they just started their second game. So we'll we'll go ahead and send this over to Quantum Gamble. I don't know Quantum Gamble at all, so I have no idea what to expect over there. Uh, but this is a Division A West matchup that's coming up between Psystorm Probes and Fratris, I'm assuming. Uh, so all kinds of fun to be had, I'm sure there. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good night and we'll see you again soon.